As well, we're aware this has been a historic event for America, for the state, for the county, for the city. This pandemic has changed the way we look at life, the way we interact, and how we are going to navigate through this. When we have times that we're going through and we talk about essential workers, how they influence and shape our way of life. So I want to take a moment just to thank some of the essential workers, our nurses, our doctors, the drivers, the truck drivers, our police, our fire, the grocery workers, everyone who is taking the time, the energy, and the human element to get through this pandemic. I also want to acknowledge all the people who have lost their loved ones, the ones who have endured the suffering during this tremendous pain of the COVID-19. It's been tough. And in saying it's tough, I am very lucky and honored to have a great staff. Because we started working and understanding the impact of this in the end of February, and we made the strides that we had to make. So. Given the challenging nature of 2020, my administration's top priority was to protect the physical health of our city. Hundreds of thousands of people have died due to the coronavirus pandemic, and millions are experiencing economic hardship. State and local government are not immune to the negative physical impacts of the pandemic, and my administration, in collaboration with our city comptroller Bill Morehouse, members of the Common Council, we reduced spending on daily operations. We decreased major capital purchases by 75%. Instituted a hiring freeze on all vacant positions. Temporarily eliminated 80% of our part-time workers. Reduced non-essential overtime. Reduced salary for several of our part-time employees. And we sought voluntary furloughs for certain full-time positions. And we issued an early retirement incentive for our CSEA workers and non-union employees. The facts speak for themselves. Our eighth consecutive budget surplus that stands extremely strong for the administration and the department heads and all city employees. However, when you look at the goal and the Government Finance Officers Association recommends $12 million for a fund balance given the size of Utica's budget. Our fund balance has grown from a negative, let me just say that, negative $15,000 in 2012. Try to wrap your hands around that a little bit. Negative $15,000 in 2012 when this administration took over to where we are today of $8 million. It's the highest level in decades. We have made tremendous progress, but we're not yet at our goal. The city's economic development staff, governed by, once again, a great department leader, Brian Thomas, we took and crafted plans which allocated $300,000 to 33 existing businesses within the city, as well as providing $1 million to residents impacted by the pandemic to help pay for their rent and their mortgages. Increasing our sales tax revenue, effectively marketing and selling city-owned properties, to private developers, as well as continuing to the transformative economic development that's been occurring prior to the pandemic. And we continue to grow. Despite the pandemic, our sales tax is rising, 2012-13, to where we are right now. Once again, I have to give the accolades to my department, because as I said to everyone, the only thing we have to offer is service. And we have to do it better than anybody else. And we have to make a reason for an investor to want to invest in the city of Utica. Because at the end of the day, they want return on their investment. Major projects in our city which are moving forward, such as our downtown medical campus, the development of an exciting harbor project which will be a destination for all, the new fitness mill. That's a component, the new fitness mill. It's going to have alongside of it multiple other businesses that are coming in to create that sales tech and exposure on a risk in the street that we've been looking for. 150 unit housing in Globe Mills in West Utica. 
a 60 unit housing project in a lower east side starting line apartments and the redevelopment right over here at the former Utica Steam Cotton Factory in our downtown area. The city is moving forward on a major initiative, the purchasing of our streetlights from National Grid. Nearly three quarters of the city streets have been converted to LED. The remaining will be done in spring 2021. This project will save the city money while upgrading our infrastructure and reducing the greenhouse emissions. <music>